Today, in this video, we will be seeing the difference between scalars and vectors. In physics, we can classify quantities as scalars and vectors. Basically, the difference is that a direction is associated with a vector but not with a scalar. The mathematical quantities that are used to describe the motion of objects can be divided into two categories. The quantities either a scalar or a vector. These two categories can be distinguished from one another by their distinct definitions. So what are scalars? Scalars are quantities that are fully described by magnitude only or their numerical value alone. The distance between two points, mass of an object, the temperature of a body are a few examples of scalar quantities. Let us see an example when we weigh an object. Have you ever thought, how is it that mass is a scalar quantity, but weight is a vector quantity? Let us see an example when we weigh an object. Mass has no direction, but weight does. It is directed downwards. Remember that weight is just a force measured in newtons. Remember the formula W is equal to mg. Since you are being accelerated downwards by gravity, all the time the direction if this force is directed downwards. It has a direction. It is a vector quantity. On the other hand, mass is the amount of something. Is this directed anyway? No. It has no direction. Hence, it is a scalar. Scalars can be added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided just as the ordinary numbers. For example, if the length and breadth of a rectangle are 1 meter and 0.5 meter respectively, then its perimeter is the sum of the lengths of the four sides. Now let's see what is a vector quantity. A vector quantity is any quantity that has magnitude and direction, such as displacement or velocity. Vector quantities are represented by mathematical objects called vectors. Geometrically, vectors are represented by arrows with the end marked by an arrow head. This obeys the triangle law of addition or equivalently the parallel law of addition which we will be seeing in the future videos. Now, let's have an example of displacement. It doesn't follow the path you took. On other hand, if you start at home and take a walk around the block with your dog, your endpoint is still at home. So therefore, your displacement vector will be zero since your beginning and end point position is the same. Displacement wise, you didn't go anyway. This displacement vector includes not only how far you have traveled, but also in which direction you have traveled. Say you start off at home and make your way to school. Your displacement vector starts at home and ends at school. It's one straight line. 